Well, hello, beloved of God. Four days ago, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where CK and Brian and I live, where our ministry is headquartered, I'm sure you, the entire world, has heard by now, there was the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States, at least in recent history. And October 1st, the seriousness of the tragedy is just beyond belief. How in the world could anyone do that? You can't wrap your brain around it. It's just unbelievable. It only from the mind of a demon-possessed lunatic who embodies pure evil could such a thing ever occur. There have been so many tragedies in America recently. Looking at you know, so many of the extreme weather events with hurricanes and uh, flooding, fires, those kind of situations, the threat of earthquakes, earthquakes in Mexico. And, you know, a lot of people have tried to use those to somehow pronounce a judgment of God or whatever their political agenda and ideas are, you know, to promote. Uh, but if there's one thing about this situation, you cannot blame the mass shooting on global warming. You can't blame it on God's judgment. No, it was pure evil that happened. And when it occurred, you know, CK and I, that evening, we just had a wonderful service that afternoon. You probably watch it, you know, the live streaming on YouTube. And we come back. We take our dog out for a walk a little after 10 o'clock that evening. Uh, we left the TV on, came back in after the walk, and there it is. We sat down in shock and just watched it, began to pray and pray and pray while it was in, uh, still an active shooting event. Uh, and then to the wee hours of the morning, we stayed up most of the night watching, observing, praying, praying about all the different things that are going on, um, and praying for the victims. Just a lot of intense prayer. But during that time, we questioned ourselves. We said, we're prophets. Why didn't we see this coming? And then the Spirit of the Lord spoke to us and said, what do you mean? You did see it coming. What have you been preaching on? For the last eight days, why do you think the intensity of the feelings that you experienced over the prior week were so strong? And we began to evaluate that and wow, just kind of like out of the blue, the Spirit of the Lord had spoke to us, our hearts, about the trauma in America. And it was so intense, we didn't realize that the intensity of it was not just because of America, but because in just a matter of days, there would be that mass shooting, that massacre, that tragedy hit our city where we live, affect our people. And up till now, we thought Las Vegas is one of those cities that's relatively unscathed by all of the different tragedies that have been happening. Now, this is not a sermon about tragedy. Uh, follow along with me in a minute. And the Lord said, you did know. That's why you preached what you preached. Because as a prophet, you expressed what was going on in the Spirit and you spoke about the answer to it in advance. And he said, that's why on, I think it was Saturday night before it happened, I did a live YouTube, I think it was Facebook video, about the angels. I saw so much activity, angelic activity, just flowing through our nation, through our lives, individual lives. And, and I saw the protecting uh, angelic powers that are working over President Trump and all these things. And then I preached about it. I preached about the shift uh, and the good things that were coming on Sunday afternoon. And then, bam, it hits. And the Lord spoke, because there's a little bit of condemnation about that. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, just like you were feeling and dealing with in the spirit the trauma prior to the event, you also were prophesying and proclaiming and releasing the shift and the good things 
and revival that will follow. And so that's what I want to proclaim. I want to thank every single person out there that's been praying for CK and Brian and I. Been praying for Las Vegas. We sure need prayers. Just keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. You know, somebody today told me that the unity that's happening as far as just the city coming together all from, you know, every realm of the city, it's just been phenomenal the way that people have been coming in and pouring in millions of dollars and, and those blood banks uh, are just to capacity and, and places that have been gathering food and resources for people that have been affected you know, it's like they, they've had to just kind of uh, just close their doors in the sense of say, we, we don't have room for any more. It's just phenomenal. The churches have been coming to you. All of that's great. But this one person said, this is revival. And I looked at him and said, no, this is not revival. This is wonderful. God is in all of this response. But that's not revival. If, if that was revival, then San Bernardino would have brought revival. The shooting in Florida would have brought revival. The hurricanes that hit would have brought revival. That's not what brings revival. Tragedy uh, brings a situation for people to respond with the goodness and the love of God and even lead people to Christ. But revival is something else. The kind of revival that I saw coming to America when Michael the angel raised me up in June of 2013 and he showed me that entire mass swirling rainbow colors lowering the revival and the move of God, the throne of God, the covenant of God coming to America. That's different. CK and I have lived through those kind of revivals before. We know that revival takes on a life of its own and it crosses all boundaries and it just moves. Tragedies shake people so that usually the following Sunday or two after a tragedy, the churches in the area are full. But in six months from then, from that time, you know, what's going on? You see, when revival hits, it's continuous. It's a supernatural divine move of God not exclusive of the church because it flows through the church, but it's outside of the sanctuary walls. It's something that the Holy Spirit releases by a praying people who are willing to host the glory and allow that to come. That's what I want to see hit Las Vegas and to hit your city, to hit your family, to hit you, to hit your church, to to hit and to flow through your entire community and to flow through the United States of America. That's what I'm praying for. So continue praying for us and all those good things, but add in that the glory of God would be in Las Vegas and the United States of America. And I just want to say one quick thing. Las Vegas is not Sin City. Las Vegas did not deserve this any more than your city deserved it. Las Vegas is 2 million people that has about a 9-mile strip in the center with a bunch of casinos and hotels where on any given day, there's up to one-third of a million tourists from all over our nation and the world that come. But all of those people, most of, most of, they're always the bitter lot. There's always the, the sinners and the evil and the wicked and the criminals. You've got them in your city too. But the vast majority of those people and all the people that live around Las Vegas are just good, wonderful people, like your next door neighbors, perhaps, or your co-workers, your attorney, your doctor. And they're good people. And they care about Las Vegas and they're praying for Las Vegas. And they're also praying for revival in America. And we're praying for your city. I want you to know that the answer for the trauma of all of these events is the same thing that brings revival. And it is an outpouring of the glory of God. The glory of God. In the spiritual atmosphere over America, you have heard me say that there are spirits of terrorism, violence, hatred, strife. But guess what? The same atmosphere also contains... Truth, justice, purity, love, goodness, peace, 
God is there. The spiritual warfare is over who we are going to allow to occupy us, to have our cities, and to have our nation. And it's going to be God. The glory of God is the answer to the sickness, to the problems. And the glory of God is what releases revival. Revival. Lord God, as I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone that's listening to me. Even those that are in other countries, the same thing holds true for them. I pray on a personal basis, Lord God, that the glory of God would come into their lives. That at this particular moment, that the anointing release hits them and shakes them to the very core. That the Holy Spirit fills them and overtakes them overtakes their own reasoning and intellect, overtakes the arm of their own flesh, uses those things, but overtakes them with the power of God. And in the confines of that glory, there is facilitated something that we call healing, restoration, renewal, revival. As you work through individuals, as you work through groups, as you work through a nation, let revival be released upon this nation. Let revival hit Las Vegas and every other city in the name of Jesus. But let it come, Lord God, we pray, through an outpouring of your glory, the presence of God through the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives, that our churches turn from fashion parades and cerebral exercises and dissertations to God showing up and showing off. And that it explodes and always in every revival throughout history. That it goes to the community. It happens outside of the sanctuary walls. The sanctuary walls are the training place and the equipping of the saints. How to walk in the glory how to lay hands on the sick, how to speak the word of God, how to share the good news of Jesus Christ, how to rebuke the demonic. But it's all done out there. A mobilized body of Christ hitting the streets and taking Jesus to the world. That's what we pray for America. And that only happens when the glory of God shows up. Learn to host the glory. And you can have the glory. This is not something that's independent of you. Believers, it's not like, oh, you know, if God wants me to have the glory, he'll give it to me. No. You have to seek it. Why didn't you say, well, if God wants to save me, then he'll save me. I have no responsibility for it. If God wants to fill me with the Holy Spirit, then somehow it'll just fall on me and I'll get, no, everything in the kingdom you have to believe for and you have to receive. Receive and host the glory in your life. Learn how to do that. If you don't know how, then you watch videos on YouTube. Uh, if your church doesn't participate in it, then you do it at home. You gather neighbors together and you hold some kind of a prayer meeting uh, and you just host the glory of God. Learn how to, to release it to your life. And it comes on and it stays. It's not like, oh, well, it's here today and then maybe next Sunday it'll show up again. No, it's there all the time. And when the glory is there all the time, revival flows. So Lord, we pray for America now. We pray for revival. We pray for the glory. We pray for the motivating of the body of Christ. We pray for revival flow through our land now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Again, people, thank you for all your prayers. We appreciate you. We love you so much. And as a body of Christ, the United States of America, I got to pray it. I got to pray it. Here it comes. If you know it, pray it with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in the United States of America, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you.